next B to take. So this is B here, T all the way up here. And it passes through M on the way. The lift travels 45 meters from B to M at an angle of 45 degrees off the vertical. So just the vertical, that's 54 degrees, sorry. And a further 22 meters from M to T at an angle of 72 degrees is vertical. How far does the ski lift rise vertically from B to M? So when you're talking about the vertical level, is voice to transfer M directly across like so. We're talking about this vertical level here. So we're essentially talking about this green line here is what we had to figure out. Now please remember it's a right angle triangle. This green uh, 45 is the hypotenuse. This green side will be the adjacent. So we're using the hypotenuse and the adjacent. So we're going to use uh, cos. Remember so Katoa, silly old Harry, sine equals ops over hypotenuse. Cos equals adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan equals opposite over adjacent. So we're going to go with cos 45 degrees. So this is part one. So cos 54 degrees. Cos 54 degrees equals your adjacent, which we'll call x, divided by our hypotenuse, which is 45. Multiply up to 45, it's division on the right, which will make it multiplication on the left. Enter that into the calculator. 45 uh, cos 54, we get an answer of 26.45, doesn't tell us to round it off at all, so just to use 26.45 would be grand, 26.45 meters equals x. Calculate the horizontal distance between m and t, the horizontal distance between m and t, if you were to pull up uh, m, like so, and you were to transfer it across, up like that, straight up. The horizontal distance is this distance here, which we will color in red. So in this case, this is the opposite side, which we'll call a uh, Y. We'll call this letter Y. Uh, 22 is the hypotenuse. We can see that there's a right angle triangle here using the angle of 72. Okay. So what can we do here? Well, we have opposite and hypotenuse, so we're gonna use sine, silly old Harry. So for part two, we're gonna use sin, 72 degrees, equals y over 22. Okay, 22 is division on the right, which will make a multiplication when we move it to the left, so it's gonna be 22 sine 72 equals y and then we're going to get y equals 22 sine 72 and that will equal 20.92 for y or 22 sine 72 20.92 okay happy days how much higher is t than b that's an interesting one how much higher is T than B? Well, I need to get the vertical height. So if I was to transfer T, this dot all the way over, if I was to go perfectly horizontal with T, I now have to find out this length here, which I'll use in this yellow line here, I have to find, okay? So if we can find out this green line here, or sorry, this pink line here, I can add it to the, to the green answer from part one. The green answer from part one was 26.45, okay, which we already know. So I'm just going to rub that out. We know that the green part is 26.45. And this yellow, uh, and so I need, to, I need to get the pink part here. That's the only part I'm missing. So that is in fact the adjacent. So you could use, uh, you could use Protagoras theorem or you could use uh, Sokotoa. E either method is good. So I'm just going to get rid of this part one here. So the first method you could use is the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is 22 squared, so you could say 22 squared, which is the hypotenuse of this triangle up here, equals the adjacent, which we'll call, uh, I'll pick a letter, just call it A. Adjacent equals A squared 
the opposite, which we know is uh, 20.92. So that's 20.92 for the opposite. So 20.92 squared. Okay. This means a squared equals, uh, what's 22 squared? 22 squared is 484. 20.92 squared is uh, 4376464. Take them away from each other. 484 minus 437.6464. And what we get there is 46.3536, I believe. And we might square root that. Square root it. Uh, square root. One is on zero. So we're going to get 6.8 for that. When we square root both sides. Okay, so square root of 46.3536. And yeah, 6.808, so actually 6.81 to the nearest meter. Give your answer correct to the nearest meter. So we're meant to be given all of them correct to the nearest meter, I suppose. We only read that there a second ago. So the first answer will be 26 meters. The second answer will be 21 meters. I did the calculation without rounding off, which is technically more accurate. So, so that would be seven meters for that one because 6.8 rounds to seven. Now guys, the other way of doing this question, remember I got 6.8 was to use, uh, oh, and that's not even the answer. It's, uh, sorry, my bad. I keep forgetting them after the full thing. So it's actually my, it's here to here. So is 26.45 plus 6.8 is 33.25, which is 33 meters. Okay. Now for this little part here, remember we got 6.8. We could have used costs. We could have used costs 72 equals just call it a over 22 and then we would have got a equals 22 cos 72 and we're fully expecting this to be 6.8 that would have been another way of doing the same question 6.79 or 6.8 okay so another way of doing the same question okay now we're on to that's 12 done now we're on to 13 okay while trying to swim across the river, Jerry was swept downstream. The river is 50 root 3 meters wide and 300 meters. Uh, he swam in 300 meters diagonally across the stream. At what angle was he dragged downstream? First question is an angle question. Okay. And in the angle question, what we know is we know the adjacent and we know the hypotenuse. So once again, see the old Harry, chase that horse through our attic. So we we want the we want the angle. So an angle question. So we have adjacent and hypotenuse, which means select cos. Cos theta equals adjacent, which is 150 root 3, over hypotenuse, which is 300. And in the calculator, 150 root 3. Divide that by 300 is a, oh. We'll, we'll, we, since it doesn't give it as that, we'll, we'll just uh, we'll just cause inverse it. My bad. Just shift cause inverse to get the angle. You need to cause inverse. So t to equals when you bring cos over, it turns into cos inverse. That means you're looking to find out what the angle is. Okay. It's the only way you can find the angles using the cos inverse button or the sine inverse or the tan inverse button. So 150 root three over 300. And this should tell us what the angle is. 30 degrees. It took Jerry, it took two minutes to cross the river. What was his average speed? Well, speed equals distance over time. 
he traveled 300 meters and he wants it in seconds so 120 minutes is sorry two minutes is 120 seconds so 30 300 divided by 120 uh 2.5 meters per second okay next question is how far was jerry how far downstream was jerry dragged suppose we could use we could use any we, we have a couple of methods at our disposal here we could use protagoras theorem we could use a uh, sokotoa Sokotoa will be probably just a little bit faster so i'm looking to figure out how far downstream is the distance of these green lines here that's how far downstream he's getting dragged okay so we can use theta so we can say that uh cos 30 that uh, we need to use the opposite so we can use a uh, tan 30 equals opposite divided by adjacent so it could be uh, x over 150 root 3 you could also use uh, sine 30 equals x over 300 you'll get the same answer either way or you could use Pythagoras theorem whatever you think now what we have here guys is we're going to we're going to try to force one first x equals 150 root 3 it's division on the right which will make a multiplication on the left so it'll be it'll be 150 root 3 multiplied by tan 30 equals x i know you guys would want me to keep the x on the right hand side so 150 root 3 tan 30 Oop. and what you get is 150 meters okay that's all good or 300 sine 30 because 300 is division on the right which would make a multiplication on the left what is 300 sine 30 long and behold the same answer didn't didn't matter which way you did it okay so he gets dragged uh, 150 meters downstream calculate the average speed of the river in meters per second well if you get tripped if the river is only is the only thing pushing them to the right okay jerry tries to aim so if you imagine this is jerry here okay what jerry tries to do is jerry tries to go straight across like so but the river is the only thing pushing them to the right so when jerry tries to swim across the river sort of brings them like that okay so what we can say is how fast the river is going is basically the river makes jerry travel 150 meters in two minutes which is 120 seconds so what's 150 divided by 120 5 over 4 or 1.25 meters per second okay so that's uh, 12 and 13 done now we're on to 15 When a person stands level ground for uh, sorry 100 meters from a cliff so this is where the person is here okay uh, you can ignore the person's height or can you yeah yeah yeah. the angle of the uh, from the foot of the cliff the angle of elevation on top is 40 degrees calculate the height of cliff correct nearest meter so i have to calculate the opposite so this is a right angle triangle like so now the, the, the graph is slightly off okay you don't have to worry too much about this i know the question should be to here okay or it should be 100 meters from the foot of the cliff so this 100 is a bit misleading it's actually 100 from here to here just to let you know that's a bit of a misleading question 100 meters from the foot of the cliff okay so it's a right angle triangle it's the only way we're going to do this okay and it's 100 so we know the adjacent and we're looking for the opposite so we're going to use silly out harry sign chase a horse true our attic so we're going to use tan because we, we want the opposite and we're going to use the adjacent so it's going to be tan 40 degrees equals the opposite which we'll call h because it's the height of the uh, cliff h divided by 100 
this means h is 100 is division on the right which will make it multiplication when it travels to the left so it's going to be 100 tan 40 so 100 tan 40 83.91 and it wants to nearest meter so just 84 meters okay so h equals 84 meters Okay, if the person moves to a different point of level ground, 244 meters from the foot of the cliff. So what we're basically saying here, guys, is that from this point here all the way to the foot of the cliff is 244 meters, okay? So we're going to move this guy all the way back. So I can get my little man here. Nope, oh, there he is. He's all the way back here now, okay? Now we want to find out the new angle which is uh, this angle in here, which we'll call x. Now, what we know is for this angle x, it's going to be a lot shallower than the 40 degrees that came before it. We can see that the 40 degrees seems to be a much bigger angle than x. We know the adjacent is 244 because it's 144 plus 100. And we know the opposite is 84. So once again, we're using opposite and adjacent. So it's going to be tan. It's going to be tan x is 84 divided by 244. Okay, now the only way to get an angle on its own is using tan inverse. So we're going to do tan inverse 84 over 244 because we're, this is an angle question. Because we're looking for the angle. Okay, correct to the nearest degree. So shift tan inverse 84 divided by 244. And we get 18.99 or 19 meters. Okay, so that's 12, 13, and 15 done. Now I'm on to 16. King George is standing on a tower in his old castle and looking towards the river. On one side his army and on the other side a gang of raiders. The angle of depression to his army is 56 degrees while the angle of depression to the raiders is 44 degrees. The tower is 23 meters high. How far is King George's army from the tower? Now question is does it mean I think it means the horizontal distance guys okay so I'm gonna go with this because they're not going to climb up to the top of the to the top of the tower to get home. Okay, so what we're going to say is this, guys. We're looking for them. We're looking for this red length here to get King George's army back again. Okay. Now there is a little trick here, guys, that you might not be aware of. I'm just going to I'm just going to run you through this little piece of education here. See the way if I make an X, it doesn't matter what one, all right? What will always happen is that this angle here will be the same angle as this one here and this one here will also be the same angle as this one here provided I don't change direction at the junction okay so that's a rule okay they're called fair degree opposite angles now the rule we're going to use is what's called alternate angles if I draw a Z like so and I, in this Z I make sure that these two lines are parallel they have to be parallel this means that this angle here will be the same as this angle here and that works no matter what way I spin it around. So if I spin it around like this, or like this, it's basically, it's basically the angles are the same, all right? So this works, so what we can say here is that this angle here, which is 56, is also the same as this angle here, which is 56 degrees, okay? So that's what we're gonna do here, okay? To figure out what is the red side. So. We know the angle, we know the, we're looking for the red line, which we'll call X. We know that the, the height or the opposite is 23. So we have the opposite, we have the adjacent, or sorry, we want the adjacent, and we have the angle is 56 degrees. So what we're gonna do here, guys, is we're gonna figure it out. So we're going to say that uh, tan 56 
is opposite, which is 23, divided by adjacent, which is x. Now, x is multiply on the left, which will make it division, sorry, it's division on the right, which will make it multiplication on the left. So the first thing is to move the x over and we get x tan 56 equals 23. The tan 56 is multiplication on the left, that in turn will make it division on the right. So 23 divided by tan 56. So 23 divided by tan 56. And we get 15.513. 15.513. And it wants it to the nearest meter. So that would be 16 meters. Okay. 15.513 but 16 meters how far is the raiders army away from the tower well we're going to do the same trick here if this is 44 degrees then this must be also 44 degrees so we're going to use a similar method to part one so what we're going to do next is we're going to find out uh, how long this uh, green line is here from here to here okay so, what we have here, 44 degrees, we're looking to find, uh, we'll call this A, and we know that the opposite is 23, we're going to use tan again, so we're going to use tan 44 degrees equals A over 23, we're then going to use uh, A equals 23 tan 44 because you cross multiply it up so you get 23 tan 44 and what you get is 22.21 meters division on the right is multiplication on the left yeah so a equals 22.21 uh, degrees Sorry, meters, and that is 22 meters. Now, by this logic, the only thing separating the two armies is a river, which I'm now doing in blue. Okay? So, the green line is 22 meters, but the... Uh... Oh, sorry, guys, I made a big mistake on that last one. Excuse me, guys. I made a big mistake on that last one. Big mistake. All right, let's go again. Opposite over adjacent. 23 over A. A is division on the right, which will make it multiplication on the left. Tan 44 is multiplication on the left, which will make it division on the right. Put that into your calculator and you get 23.82, which will make it 24 meters. Now, if these guys are 24 meters away and these guys are 16 meters away, and the only difference between them is the river, this must mean the river is 8 meters wide. Okay, so the river is 8 meters wide. Okay, so that's uh, 12, 13, 15, 16. Now we're going to do 18. So, in question 18, and swing on a wooden garden swing, the seat S is held in position by two ropes, all of length 3 meters. Her total angle of swing is 110 degrees or 55 degrees each way. What's the difference in height? of the seat at the lowest and highest point of her swing. Give your answer correct to the nearest centimeters. All right, so she's here. This is the seat at, at its lowest, and this is the seat at its highest. Okay, now what we know straight away is here to here is three meters. Okay, and if I can find out what 
this red part is, then I can find out what this purple part is. And the purple part is the difference in height. So I'm going to concentrate on finding the red part first. Okay, The red part is here to here. And it's going to be the adjacent. We know the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is 3 meters. So it's going to be sine, which is opposite of our hypotenuse, sine 55. Oh, sorry, not sine 55. Adjacent is what I'm looking for, guys. My fault. I'm on a roll here. Adjacent, because the opposite would be uh, the opposite would be this blue distance here. So we're actually looking for the adjacent. So it's going to be cos 55 degrees equals adjacent, which we'll call A, divided by 3. And then A equals 3 cos 55. And 3 cos 55 is... 1.72 now the red line is 1.72 we're asked to find the difference in height which I said earlier is this one here but if we were to slide that across we're actually looking for this distance here so what we get is 3 meters, take away 1.72 meters, and that is 1.28 meters. And in nearest centimeter is 128 centimeters. Okay. In your solution, explain how you think the mathematical model below arrived at. All right, well, a girl, you can just say a girl on a swing uh, is because you have gravity acting downwards, it goes in a perfect arc. So if I was to get this girl here, try and uh, explain this as best I can. So what we're essentially saying is that she's she's sort of swinging in an arc like this. So that means that she she her motion is circular, so that's how they arrived at the following uh, the following uh, thing the following uh, mathematical model. Okay, so her motion is circular as the uh, strings remain tight during the swing, and this means that you can do it using a circle, and then you can measure your angle of the you can measure the angle of the string compared to the starting position. So that's how you get the angle there, okay? It's not it's gonna be a much easier question like that in the junior's there than that. Okay. Uh, 